The mid-18th century epitomized the zenith of the European Enlightenment, a period of intellectual awakening, grand explorations, and soaring prosperity. Lisbon, the vibrant capital of Portugal, stood as a glittering testament to this era. Fueled by the immense wealth pouring in from the Brazilian gold mines and its command over the lucrative spice trade, Lisbon had become one of Western Europe's wealthiest and most ornate port cities, adorned with magnificent palaces, richly decorated churches, and a bustling, self-assured population. Yet, this atmosphere of architectural grandeur and philosophical optimism was violently shattered on the morning of November 1, 1755, All Saints' Day. This was the moment nature delivered its most brutal reminder of human fragility. The Great Lisbon Earthquake remains one of history's deadliest and most culturally transformative natural disasters, tearing down not just buildings, but the very philosophical and theological underpinnings of European thought. This chronicle delves into a tragedy that transcended geology, forcing a profound existential re-evaluation of faith, destiny, and humanity's place in the cosmos. The calamity commenced around 9.40 a.m. The force of the earthquake is estimated by modern seismologists to have registered between 8.5 and 9.0 on the Richter scale, making it one of the most powerful recorded in history. Its epicenter lay far in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 200 kilometers off Cape St. Vincent, along a massive, unidentified fault line. The sheer violence of the prolonged shaking, which lasted several harrowing minutes, instantly reduced most of the stone-built city to dust. However, what made Lisbon's fate uniquely catastrophic was the progression of the disaster through three compounding phases. Firstly, the initial massive tremor was immediately followed by the second phase, fire. Thousands of cooking fires, candles lit for the holy day, and oil lamps were overturned in the rubble, igniting uncontrolled blazes. Fanned by the wind, the flames quickly coalesced into a raging firestorm that consumed the narrow streets of the city center. Seeking refuge, thousands of survivors rushed to the open safety of the harbor area, only to witness a bizarre and terrifying phenomenon, the ocean rapidly receding, exposing the seabed. This was the harbinger of the third and most devastating phase, the tsunami. Generated by the seafloor displacement, three successive giant waves, some estimated at over 20 meters high, slammed into the low-lying coast, crushing the waterfront and engulfing the desperate throngs who had gathered there. The combined effect of the triple threat resulted in an estimated death toll across Lisbon and its surrounding areas ranging horrifically between 30,000 and 50,000 people. In the immediate wake of this unparalleled destruction, one figure rose above the chaos, Sebastião José de Carvalho e Melo, the Marquis of Pombal, the powerful chief minister to King José I. While the king was paralyzed by shock and fear, subsequently living the rest of his life in fear of collapsing stone buildings, Pombal offered a response defined not by religious piety, but by radical pragmatism. His legendary instruction to his monarch was, What now? We bury the dead and feed the living. Pombal swiftly established what is recognized as the world's first systematic disaster management plan. He deployed the military to prevent looting, organized immediate food distribution, and used extraordinary dictatorial powers to cut through the bureaucratic paralysis. Critically, Pombal ordered an immediate, scientific survey of the damage, sending out questionnaires to every parish to document the event, a pioneering act in the history of seismology. He decreed that the city would not simply be rebuilt, but entirely redesigned along rational, modern lines. The narrow, medieval alleys were replaced with wide, fire-resistant, grid-patterned avenues. In a move that secured his place as the father of modern engineering, he reportedly ordered military troops to march in rhythm around scale models of proposed buildings to simulate seismic forces, 
an early, practical application of earthquake-resistant design. Pombles will ensure that Lisbon rose from its ashes as the prototype of a modern, planned, and seismically sensible European city. The Lisbon earthquake inflicted more than physical damage. It detonated a bomb beneath the foundational philosophies of the Age of Enlightenment. The sheer magnitude of the suffering occurring precisely on the Holy Day of All Saints triggered an intense theological crisis. The dominant philosophy of the time, optimism, championed by figures like Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, asserted that the world, created by a perfect God, must logically be the best of all possible worlds. The indiscriminate death and unimaginable agony witnessed in Lisbon made this intellectual claim untenable and morally repulsive to many. The crisis found its voice in two of the era's greatest thinkers. Voltaire, horrified by the event, published his satirical masterpiece, Candide, which ruthlessly mocked Leibnizian optimism and launched a devastating critique of the problem of theodicy, the attempt to reconcile the existence of an all-good, all-powerful God with the reality of evil. In contrast, Jean-Jacques Rousseau argued that the disaster was not divine punishment, but a consequence of human error, specifically the folly of constructing massive, densely populated cities that amplified the impact of natural forces. The earthquake indelibly sowed the seeds of skepticism regarding divine providence and absolute authority, fundamentally shifting the currents of enlightenment thought toward a greater focus on empirical science and practical social reform. The Lisbon earthquake left a multifaceted legacy, impacting global history on cultural, political, and scientific fronts. For the nascent Earth sciences, the event serves as the essential starting point for modern seismology. Across Europe, intellectuals and scientists began systematic inquiries into the natural causes of earthquakes, accelerating the divorce between geology and theology. Politically, the enormous economic cost of reconstruction, coupled with the interruption of trade, significantly weakened Portugal's colonial power and hastened the decline of its imperial dominance on the global stage. King Jose I's withdrawal from public life, cemented by his lifelong fear of enclosed spaces, effectively left all power in Pombal's hands, allowing for his authoritarian, yet progressive, restructuring of the entire Portuguese state. The cultural trauma was immense. The memory of the catastrophe lingered, reminding a generation accustomed to rational control of the immense and unpredictable power of nature. The Great Lisbon Earthquake thus stands as one of the most profound pre-modern calamities, a singular event that served as both a geological catastrophe and an existential turning point for Western civilization. The Lisbon Earthquake of 1755 was far more than a physical disaster. It was a devastating cultural fault line where faith and rationality collided. While the city was systematically and scientifically rebuilt under the uncompromising hand of the Marquis of Pombal, the mental landscape of Europe was irreversibly scarred. Philosophers wrestled with the unbearable presence of random suffering, while engineers sought to understand and mitigate nature's laws. This catastrophe shattered the naive optimism that had characterized the early Enlightenment, compelling a necessary shift toward a more empirical, skeptical, and realistic understanding of human vulnerability versus the forces of the natural world. The grid-like avenues and sturdy, low-rise buildings that arose from Lisbon's ashes stand as enduring monuments to that harsh lesson reminding us that even in the pursuit of technological and intellectual progress, civilization is never fully secure against the devastating unpredictability of the earth beneath our feet. Step away from the well-trodden paths of history books and join us on an immersive journey into the strangest, most destructive and deeply mysterious corners of the past. This channel is your exclusive gateway to the moments when the world defied logic, when ancient civilizations vanished without a trace, when natural disasters reshaped continents, and when human folly reached its most bizarre extremes. Forget the familiar narratives, we dive into the chilling secrets of lost empires, 
the terrifying force of forgotten cataclysms like the one that leveled Lisbon, and the tantalizing puzzles that have confounded historians for centuries. If you're compelled by the thrill of the unknown, the allure of the unexplained, and the sheer weirdness that lies just beneath the surface of official records, then prepare to question everything you thought you knew. We aren't just telling stories, we are excavating the past's most fascinating failures, its most beautiful ruins and its most enduring enigmas. The curtain is rising on history's hidden theater, will you take your seat?